Hi, in this lecture I will give an introduction to the famous Schelling segregation model, named after the scholar Thomas Schelling. And this model was developed to understand residential segregation. It's well known that ethnic and racial groups live in different neighborhoods, and so this model aims to explain why that is happening. The Schelling model is a so-called agent-based model. So to understand the Schelling model, it's fruitful to know how to build an agent-based model. Now let's see how that works step by step and what we can learn from the Schelling model. In the first step, you define who is in your model. These are so-called agents. In the Schelling model, the agents are blacks and whites. And it is assumed that these two groups are equal in size. Our reality is of course more difficult, more complex, but if you want to make a model, it's helpful to start very simple. In the second step, you need to specify the social environment. So which social context do you think is important for understanding segregation? Schools maybe, or organizations? Well, you need to make a choice. In the Schelling model, they focused on neighborhoods. So now we have they are blacks and whites, and they live in neighborhoods. And then in the third step, you can be more explicit about the preferences and behavior of the agents. These are so-called micro-rules. In the Schelling model, several micro-rules were specified. First, the model assumes that blacks and whites know about the racial composition of their neighborhood. So if they would live in a very segregated neighborhood, then they would know that. And second, the model assumes that people move to another neighborhood if they are not happy with the racial composition of the neighborhood in which they live. Now you can of course wonder when people would become happy or unhappy about the racial composition of their neighborhood. So the model has to be very explicit about this. And what the Schelling model assumes is that people have only mild in-group preferences. Specifically, people want to live in a neighborhood with more than one-third of the neighbors being of the same race. That's the threshold. If less than one-third of their neighbors is from the same race, they move to another neighborhood. Okay, so now you have your agent-based model uh, almost, right? It's almost complete. We have blacks and whites. They live in neighborhoods, they know what their neighborhood looks like, and they move away if less than one third is from their own race. The next step is to specify how to do the simulation. Thomas Schelling used a simple chessboard. He then randomly distributed black and white pieces over the board. So each piece, each black and white actor, has neighbors. And if there are too many neighbors from a different race, then you move away. So what you can do, you can play this game yourself. And just all you need is a chessboard and move unhappy pieces one by one. And then a the big question is, you know, what happens? What is the result of this simulation experiment? In the Schelling model, the outcome is hypersegregation. Something like this happens. Blacks are clustered together and white pieces are living somewhere else. So what can we learn from this famous agent-based model? Well, one insight is that simple aggregation does not work. That is because if, for example, a white family moves to another neighborhood, the racial composition of neighborhoods changes. And because of that change, it may well be the case that another white family decides to resettle. So the Schelling model is a very nice example of self-reinforcing processes. Once a white family decides to move away, more and more white families will follow. And because of this interplay between the social environment and individuals, it's also hard to predict which neighborhoods will become white and which ones will become black. Now to see why this is the case, consider the following example. The white family on E2 is unhappy. They could move to G3, and if they do that, then that area will become a white cluster, a white neighborhood. 
But if they would instead move to E7, then that's likely to become a white neighborhood. So the Schelling model shows that the chessboard will become very segregated, but that it's at the same time very hard to predict right in the beginning which neighborhood will eventually become white and which one black. Those who make the first steps more or less determine the outcomes of the game. Another insight from the Schelling model are so-called tipping points. These are situations in which a small change in the value of a certain variable has a big effect on the collective outcome. In a Schelling model, these tipping points relate to the racial composition of the neighborhood. And this is because people will move away from a neighborhood if less than one third of their neighborhood is from their own race. And that means that if a white family lives in a neighborhood with say 40% whites and it drops to say 38%, Nothing happens. But once it falls below that threshold of one third, everyone will suddenly move away. So apparently this Schelling model is able to explain hypersegregation, even when people have only mild, mild in-group preferences. So just a slight bias. However, now that we have done these simulations, we can think again about the assumptions included in the model. So how realistic are the assumptions? For example, do people really move away when less than one third is from their own race? And are there any differences between blacks and whites? And what happens if you use different assumptions? Do you get the same macro level results? What if we would use another threshold rule, for example? Do you still see segregation, hypersegregation? Well, these are interesting questions scholars are working on to better understand the segregation phenomenon. In summary, the Schelling segregation model is a very famous example of agent-based modeling. Using these agent-based models, these simulations, you can better understand how individuals interact with their social environment. People make decisions, their behavior changes the environment, and because the changing environment, other people are affected. And this can lead to a dynamic interplay between individuals and their social context. And the counterintuitive finding from the Schelling model is that because of this interplay, hypersegregation can emerge even when people have only mild in-group preferences. Okay, thanks for listening.